um, to think about what you see your role as in DLAC, what you'd like to get out of your experience this year, and one skill or attribute that you can contribute specifically to DLAC. So we'll have three minutes on the timer. Have you begun recording yet? Oh, yeah. Okay, I need to let them know. Sharing out what you shared with your partner? Go ahead. Yes. You, she wants me to speak for her. Okay, I will start the sentence and you will finish it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so this is uh, Hannah D, and she is one of my parents. I'm so lucky. Her daughter is gorgeous and talented, very precious. And so her role, and what do you, what were you saying was your role in this organization, do you think? It's good for the kids, you know, for to help for the second language, because I have the problem for my son. You know, Omar, <laughs> a rolling road, you know, he has a second language, like Arabic, the math and English too has a problem. Because it's different, you know, between in Jordan and here. Every time, maybe he speak good, but I don't think, think so he can, you know, write and understand, you know. And so in your speaking role, for, yeah. speaking up for your, for your child yeah. to help to make help, sure you know, that he make gets some help idea, him out. Yeah, here and you can continue in the school. Perfect. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give her a round of applause. And I asked Miss Dido if she, or did, Dido. 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 It took me a while to I'm not sure her response. Um, I was saying just as a teacher here on the um, committee, I feel my main role is to listen to parent ideas, parent concerns, um, perspectives parents have on challenges and needs and successes that their students are having. Um, and one thing that I'd like to get out of it, and I think also my role as a staff member, is to learn the reasons behind the changing and EL policies and the ones that are not changing, so that I can share those with colleagues and to, to bring questions or concerns from my colleagues and from parents or students that I have you know, as they come up, that I can bring those here. Um, and the one thing I can contribute is I've I've moved around a lot. <laughs> so this is my fifth district. So I've seen uh, my eighth school, ninth school. I've moved. I've moved around a lot. So I've seen a lot of different ways of meeting the needs of second language learners or third or English learners. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of they keep changing the acronyms. But <laughs> I've seen a lot of just different ways and different systems and different programs. And so I have a lot of just, I've seen a lot of different things sort of outside of what's being done in San Bruno. So it's a really neat perspective. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I have you know, yeah, different perspectives. Thank you so much for contributing. Can we give Ms. Dito? Thank you. Okay, um, heading on to the next slide. Um, some of our working agreements that we agreed upon last week, or last week, last time we met, um, was that we would be punctual, we will start and end on time, we will demonstrate respect for one another, being attentive to whoever is speaking or presenting, keeping our comments, question, our comments and questions focused on the topic at hand, um, and providing an opportunity for everyone to participate. Um, we'll minimize distractions, silencing our phones and eliminating side conversations. So just a reminder on those working agreements. Um, on the next slide, just wanted to take a minute to introduce you guys to, oh, that's not the next slide. <laughs> um, just one way that we can make sure that we conduct business. Oh yeah, go to the next slide, but it wasn't the right, the one I was looking for. Um, so we've placed parking lots at both ends. I wasn't sure how crowded we would be. Um, so if you guys have questions and comments that come up throughout the meeting, uh, I'd like to make sure that we honor those questions by addressing them at the, at the end of the meeting um, so that we can keep our flow and keep, our, um, keep on track with the agenda. And then uh, the same thing, if you guys need to use restrooms, if you've never been here before, the restrooms are just right through this door. Um, if you need to grab something to eat or drink, it's located at the back. Please bust your tables and tip your waitresses. <laughs> so I did want to introduce you guys, if you haven't seen this before, to the norms of collaboration. We haven't found a good way to number these. Um, but it's right after the PowerPoint slides. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about these since we've, the, these norms of collaboration are um, dispositions and skills that people demonstrate in high functioning teams. So I just wanted to take a moment to go through these and we'll just popcorn read, um, whoever wants to read pausing. Ms. Thies, will you start with pausing and then we'll just jump in and go? Oh, sure, I just was looking at pausing. 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 Pausing.
pausing before responding or asking a question allows time for thinking and enhances dialogue, discussion, and decision making. It's, I'm sorry, it's right it's after your slides are done. Oh, okay. It would be page 11 Thank if, you. if that page was numbered. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. We gotta figure out a way to number them when Rachel and I were just talking about them. Uh, talk one. Sure. Paraphrasing. Using a paraphrase starter that is comfortable for you. So, or as you are, or you're thinking. And following this starter with an efficient paraphrase, assist members of the group in hearing and understanding one another as they converse and make decisions. Was popcorn in? Oh, want me to do that the next one? I'll do it. Pos posing questions. Two intentions of posing questions are to explore and to specify thinking. Questions may be posed to explore perceptions, assumptions, and interpretations and to invite others to inquire into their thinking. For example, what might be some conjectures you are exploring? Use focusing questions such as, which students specifically or what might be an example of that to increase the clarity and precision of group members' thinking. Inquire into others' ideas before advocating one's own. Putting ideas on the table. Ideas are the heart of meaningful dialogue and discussion. Label the intention of your comments. For example, here is one idea, or one thought I have is, or here is a possible approach. Or another consideration might be providing data. Providing data, both qualitative and quantitative, in a variety of forms, supports group members in constructing shared understanding from their work. Data have no meaning meaning beyond that which we make of them. Shared meaning develops from collaboratively exploring, analyzing, and interpreting data. Paying attention to self and others. Meaningful dialogue and discussion are facilitated when each group member is conscious of self and of others, and is aware of what she or he is saying, and how it is said, as well as how others are responding. This includes paying attention to learning styles when planning, facilitating, and participating in group meetings and conversations. Assuming positive intentions. Assuming that others' intentions are positive promotes and facilitates meaningful dialogue and discussion and prevents unintentional put-downs. Using positive in intentions in speech is one manifestation of this one. Can I add something? I just was going to say that this is so much like what we do in our ELD classroom. Yes. We're studying the same thing, so it's wonderful to see it there. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So normally, if we had more time, I would have you guys go through and kind of self-evaluate in each of these areas, but for today, um, because we are um, short on time with one another, if you would just look through these and choose one area that you would like to work on today and write it on your sticky note. And I'll just put it in front of you, you don't have to share it with anyone. the meeting to order for the official business of DLAC. So normally this would be um, the role of the chairperson, like I said before, um, it would be their responsibility to call the meeting to order. Um, so I am actually calling the meeting to order at 5.47. And um, the secretary would do the roll call of the, the members. Quite yet, so I'll just go ahead and read um, the member. Actually, we already signed in, so we don't need to read them aloud. So um, we have representation. Um, just let it <laughs> but, um, we can go ahead and at the next meeting, the secretary would, would read off the, the members present. Um, the next item on the agenda would be. 
to review the agenda and adopt or make changes. Are there any um, changes or additions that need to be made to the agenda? Is this part Valerie reports like where I could share something? Um, reports from the ELAC. We're mm -hmm. reporting out what happened oh, at, that's your, be, yeah. at your um, ELAC. At your at your school site's ELAC, and that'll be the ELAC represent representative, and then at the announcements. That would I be able to share something about that? As an announcement? Yeah. Okay. I just brought a few things to just share what we're doing in class. Really Perfect. quickly, like in a few, like okay. two minutes max. Very fast. Okay. Are there any um, suggestions or changes or amendments? Okay. So we'll need a motion to adopt the agenda. I'd like to motion to adopt the agenda for Second. November 13th. Ms. D makes, Ms. D makes a motion. Ms. Arena may second it. second it. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion is carried. Okay. Um, so at this time, we've dedicated some time for, um, for public comments. Did we have any public comments, cards? No? Okay. And also the reports from the site level ELAC. Um, Alan, do you have a report out from the site level ELAC or not? That has been okay. okay. Um, so, Bel Air, have you guys? Yeah, so, well, basically, with the most recent site council and the past couple PTA meetings, there wasn't um, an existing cohesive ELAC when I came to the school. Um, we're going to be running the ELACs. Uh, our first ELAC will be at the official ELAC, will be at the end of this month. We'll be running in those right after the uh, principal's coffees in the mornings. Yeah. And I, I know those are on your calendar. Correct. I've seen that. Okay. Um, I've got something to say about that. Um, I would caution that, Carrie, only because remember in the past year when they did that, um, you might want to reverse that, maybe have the ELAC first and then the parent coffee after, maybe have two different dates, because what happens is the parents end up leaving because it's too long. Sure. Good idea. It's, it's, it's happened actually. Yeah. I, I would caution about any to do that. Right. Because you're going to lose your parents really quick. Well, we it was a model that we used at Parkside that worked because, and then we would let the general population go, and then we were able to, um, you know, have specifically ELAC. But it's it's a good suggestion. We have a great turnout for principal coffee, so we wanted to just kind of embrace that that opportunity. Um, you know, after school was always a little bit harder, but that's, thank you for that. We'll, we'll take that into consideration for sure. Okay. Report out from John Muir. Do you have a report to give at this time? Okay. Fort Tola, do you guys have a report from your first team? No, not yet. Okay. Rolling away. We're still getting our group, because I, all of yours, so. Yeah, I asked for volunteers. One, and I, I recognize somebody who might be wanting to join my group. I would, but I'm not a parent that represents that population. Yeah. And to be honest, I'd um, like to know, so Simone was here, John Muir. No, oh, John Muir's not here? Okay, John, John Muir. John Muir. So Alan. none of the schools have had elect yet? So meetings? Yeah, we have, and we're waiting to report. Yeah, we're going to. Okay, so we should call on us. Yeah. But none of the other schools have. I don't know about other schools. Parkside, if you would like to. 
our first official ELAC meeting will be this month. So you have to conduct your elections and what right. for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're already in November. I'd like to know um, why the delay in that process. I can discuss that as possible during the meeting. I can I tell you from Portola, it's just very difficult to get mm -hmm. parents to come forward to want to serve. Well, is that the reason why we have parent liaisons? They're the liaison between the parents and the school, right? Okay. Right now, it's okay. not a discussion item. It's just an information item. Okay. So if we can allow people to give their reports, and then okay. um, when we go into the comments section, if you if you don't mind sure. um, yeah. Yeah. holding on to those comments. Okay, um, Barbara, are you? I'm gonna yeah. Um, okay. I just want to report for Parkside. Monita is mighty mouse over here. <laughs> she pulled together this wonderful meeting last Thursday. And um, we had representatives from the high school, from San Mateo um, High School District there. And um, it was to present about how to get their priority enrollment. So we had English and Spanish. And uh, we had translation there as well throughout the meeting. So parents were there, my students were there with their parents. It was wonderful. and. Um, Sometimes even some of the whole family came. So we had um, our parent liaison helping with childcare and all of that. But during the meeting, um, it was just basically to help them know, especially for eighth grade parents, what dates are coming up that they need to make sure that they're ready for. And then also to discuss our program. And um, I think of other things um, to make sure, oh, and then to establish um, the membership of parent membership, which, um, Monina went to cut right to the chase and got all those parents signed up as uh, members and committed to coming back every month. Had all the dates there, everything was cool. So sorry to talk so much, but it was informative and so much fun. And you know, it's always a joy to have parents come. I chose yeah. the, the best rep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so she had a slideshow too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Our next um, item would be our unfinished business. We don't have any unfinished business, so we'll be moving right into new business. Um, and we didn't have any public comments. Okay. Um, just a reminder that the the mission, <coughs> mission and vision of our about the mission and vision of our school district um, that we're that we're we strive to help our students um, be empowered to thrive academically socially and emotionally and be contributing members of society, which really grounds our work in the DLAC because our goal here is to ensure that we have equity among our students, that we're giving students what they need. Um, and uh, the second part of that is that we would engage and inspire our students to be productive, critical thinkers who embrace diversity, curiosity, and innovation throughout their So um, this first uh, portion, and Rachel's going to keep me tight to my agenda, is um, we have 15 minutes to go over kind of the rules, inform information on the rules and responsibilities of a DLAC. So um, as you guys can see here, the primary responsibility is to advise. Um, and by advise, that means to provide consultation, to give input and suggestions and recommendations. So. Of the first, um, advising on the development of the, the English Master Plan, which is what we looked at at our last meeting, and we'll look at again throughout. Um, participating in a district-wide needs assessment by leading that effort at your school site. Advising on the establishment of any programs, goals, and objectives for programs and services for English learners. Reviewing and commenting on the reclassification procedure, which will be the topic at our next meeting. Um, and reviewing and commenting on the written notifications that are required to be sent home to parents at the beginning of the year. Reviewing and commenting on the district's LCAP as it relates to English learners. And providing an opportunity to review and comment on the consolidated application for federal funding, which is where we um, apply for all of our different titles, Title I, Title II, Title III. Um, so one of those is for English learners, um, and the others are for unduplicated students or students who um, historically would struggle 
and also for developing our word leaders and our teachers. So your job is extremely important here at the, um, as a DLAC member. Um, DLAC members engage in the consultation process like we just talked about for the LCAP. And as we said before, these are some of the ways that you provide input for the LCAP. It's really critical that we have parent representation at these meetings so that we can hear what parents' needs are as well as from our educators um, and our community members. Um, any district, and this has actually changed since two, in 2017, it used to be 50 English learners or more, or at least 15%. Um, and now it's 31 educators, or I mean educators, English learners or more, in order to have to have a DLAC. Um, the DLAC provides input that is either reported out by DLAC representation to the LCAP committee or is included in written um, form. And so just um, in terms of what consultation means, this is the act of contributing information and opinions in order to reach a better understanding um, or make a decision. Okay, so that's the way that we'll utilize the term consultation. Just a brief overview of the LCAP. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you guys are real familiar with the LCAP, but we'll be digging into that this year. Our LCAP is based on the eight priorities of the state in three different areas. So if you think of it as little umbrellas. So for the conditions of learning, those are the basic services that students receive, the content, the textbook, um, and course access. Of engagement that's including parent and student um, as well as climate factors so by climate we don't mean like how hot it is outside or that the air is too bad to breathe <laughs> but um, in terms of like suspension data um, creating positive supports for students that kind of climate and for pupil outcomes these are our student achievement with our local assessments and our statewide assessments So our three LCAP goals, um, our initial LCAP team was very wise in making sure that those match with those three um, buckets or three umbrellas. So goal one is tied to that conditions of learning. And it, in this area, we want to make sure that we have appropriately credentialed teachers, sufficient facilities, and sufficient materials so that we can support high quality learning. In area two, we want to make sure that what we're giving our students is, um, is a high quality education with based on Common Core and um, that prepares them with 21st century skills. And in area three, which relates to engagement, um, we want to make sure that we are culturally responsive and we provide a rigorous learning environment, making sure that we're including all parents and all students. We want to make sure our students are engaged in their education. Um, and so this is why um, part of that goal would be working on developing positive behavioral supports for students. And the process, which is it's annual and we, it's continual, <laughs> it keeps going each year. Um, our current LCAP is a three-year plan goes from 2017 until 2020. So each year we don't um, change the goals, but we look at how we can improve um, or increase services that are principally directed towards unduplicated pupils. So that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. That means um, that each year we look at how we can do things better for our kids who um, are either in low income families are English learners or students with exceptional needs. So we're at the process where we're implementing and collecting and reviewing data. And then throughout the year, we continue to um, review data and make revisions and recommendations. We give an opportunity for our public to view the LCAP and make 
um, and give and provide feedback. And that is then approved to go on to the state, or not the state, the county, and then on to the state. And then we start all over again. So, you guys are all here for a purpose on the DLA, and this is just um, a, a multi-flow chart, <laughs> or a flow chart of how the process um, for establishing a DLA goes about. So, um, each <clears throat> each school site that has um, has more than 51 pupils who are are considered English learners based on their initial assessment and continue to qualify. Um, is required to have a representative committee um, or an ELAC committee. That ELAC committee, um, the percentage of parents who are on that committee must equal the size or larger of, um, of the percentage of students who are English learners. So for example, if I'm at um, school ABC, and at ABC we have 17% uh, of our kids are English learners. The composition of our ELAC would be 17% minimum of parents of English learners. Okay. For that first meeting, we must invite all families in the school. All families are welcome to attend. They do not have to be the parent of an English learner. The committee members do not have to be parents of English learners. They just have to meet that composition requirement. So again, if my school had 17% that were English learners, 17% of my ELAC would be required to be parents or guardians of English learners. During that first meeting, um, they would conduct the parent elections. Um, it's usually a pretty informal process where we beg someone to, to, to <laughs> nominate themselves to be of the president or vice chair, uh, president, and then um, we take a vote on that. Only parents of English learners may vote on those. After that, each committee or each site committee trains their members and they can make two decisions. A lot of schools that have a small population of students who are English learners or where it's very difficult for parents of English learners to get together, the properly composed ELAC might make a recommendation to give over governance to their school site council. So it doesn't mean that there is, um, there's, that, that they are, what is the word I'm looking for? It doesn't mean that we no longer have English learner par participation or parent participation. Um, they, we still have to meet that requirement of the composition for our school site council, but it does allow the school site council to make decisions without having to consult yet another another group. A lot of times this makes it easier on parents. Sometimes you have the parents who are on ELAC who also want to be on school site council. Um, if there is not if they do not decide to give over governance to the school site council, they remain as an ELAC and they meet between three and five times per year. Generally, there's four times because there's some there's four primary um, roles and obligations of uh, the ELAC committee. <clears throat> if the ELAC committee decides to remain as a as a, a separate entity, then they will elect a DLAC representative which is where we get our parent base that comes that comes here. Many of you guys were previous um, DLAC representatives and, and so it's usually a two year term. The ELAC votes, um, if, if they decide to, to be separate, then they, the school site council would elect a DLAC representative, okay? So these are some of the requirements that um, these all fall in line with the Green Act, which also is part of the Brown Act, and no other colors. Um, <laughs> so um, the meeting must be open to and allow for public input. Meeting notice and agenda must be posted at least 72 hours before the meeting. The notice and agenda must be posted at the school site or other appropriate place accessible to the public. 
and the meeting agenda must include the date, the time, and the location, and the items to be discussed. Um, action items, action cannot be taken on items that are not posted on the agenda unless there's a unanimous vote um, for immediate action. We will use Robert's Rules of Order to ensure that we have effective meetings. So this is the typical um, outline of the agenda following Robert's Rules of Order. Our board members can, can uh, attest to this kind of <laughs> format because they're very used to that. Um, so again, the, we're modeling it right now. <laughs> so we're in the new business and after this we'll have announcements. Our meeting conduct is established by Education Code 35147 that will act in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order as well as those established um, by Education Code. Um, that will conduct ourselves in a proper manner at all times. I don't think we need this statement, but this was part of the counties <laughs> that any person or persons using profanity or making libelous or slanderous statements or attempts to berate another person in public will be promptly called out of order and asked to leave if such conduct does not immediately cease. DLEC meeting. Okay. We must have a minimum of 50% plus one of the committee um, to constitute a quorum. Um, we have, I believe, 18 members. So that would be nine plus one, so we'd need 10 members. An act of the majority shall con constitute and act on behalf of the entire committee. Um, in terms of meeting procedures, no one person shall hold the floor for longer than five minutes on the same item of discussion. And when it comes to public comments, um, it would be limited to, to three minutes. And the public may address um, any item that is on the agenda or that is under the purview of this committee. So this is just an example of how we would conduct business. You'd present an item, obtain the floor, make a motion. I move that we continue this discussion. <laughs> no. Um, and then you would need a second. Um, and then after you've had a, a first and a second, there's an opportunity for discussion and then a vote. Um, if there is no second, then the motion is lost and there is, um, there is no, it's not carried out. Um, if there is a second, discussion ensues and you continue to move forward, then by voice or by hands, um, we can um, take a vote on whether So um, before, I know one of the major things that we're going to go over today are the roles and responsibilities of um, DLAC officers. And so I have printed for you guys, I used that template I shared last time to come up with like um, a draft of potential bylaws. So if you want to follow along with this at the same time, it goes with, um, with the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So then we're not doing multiple things at the same time. So we've already gone over responsibilities um, and membership, and we're in the section about DLAC officers, okay? So any officer that's on this committee, um, the, there's four different options. There's the chairperson, vice chairperson, secretary, and parliamentarian. Um, they must be a parent or guardian of an English learner or a student who's been reclassified as fluent in English, okay. So it does not have to, we lost, we lost <laughs> the connectivity again. It's <laughs> Yeah, when, if it's not moving about. Okay, so we have this in front of us now. So the president or vice chair, or per, bleh, president or chairperson, we can choose whichever one we want to call it. Um, Oh, it's coming in with the one at a time. So
So the, the chairperson or vice or, or president would preside over all committee meetings. They assist in planning of the agenda. If you want to just flip them so they're all up there at once. This person needs to ensure that they're fair and impartial at all times. Um, and that they work with the secretary to make sure that that um, that the minutes are properly recorded. We also have Rachel who stays to help make sure that um, that we have a second record of the, the minutes. Um, this person would need to stay informed on matters involving English learners and perform additional duties as appropriate to that office. And there's some um, representative duties included in the proposed bylaw. Chairperson, this person is also needs to be fair and impartial. They fill in um, when the chairperson is absent, so it's really important that they um, learn how to uh, to conduct a meeting following Robert's rules of order. Uh, they do participate in agenda planning, and they can coordinate subcommittees if if um, if that's an activity that we choose to do. Secretary. Secretary is always the most important job because the secretary is the keeper of all information. They um, are the ones responsible for taking the, the minutes um, and we'll have like an easy template for that person to use for taking minutes so that it's not very difficult and again Rachel is the expert back here in keeping notes as well. Um, they would perform correspondence on behalf of the DLAC. So if we had, for example, um, the county is planning to come out and present on um, the English learner programs and the, and the pathway to reclassification. So they would send them a thank you letter or those, those kinds of correspondence. They maintain the DLAC roster and, con and contact information and, um, as well as participating in the planning of agenda and then any other duties as related that they may be required. I'm going to speed it up. <laughs> the parliamentarian um, assists in ensuring that all rules and bylaws are followed. And this is the person who says point of order when people are not following the norms um, or the rules of parliamentary procedure. This person needs to make sure that they become familiar with parliamentary procedure and Robert's rules, um, and they would uh, they maintain order of the committee. So, at this time, now that you guys have an opportunity to go over these roles, is there anyone who'd like to nominate themselves or appear for chairperson? And then remember, it has to be a parent. So I don't know that we have enough parents here tonight. I know, I was going to say, but I can't, right? For something. What would you like well, to do? Well, you can nominate, but you can't be a, an officer. Right. I don't think we have it. We don't have enough parents tonight to do the nominations. Mm -hmm. So. And it has to be parent of you know, yeah. mm -hmm. real or RFF. Mm -hmm. So we need the other folks that aren't here tonight. So um, we'll we'll need to table this item so no motion was made. Because yeah. So she's the only parent. No, no, no. We have we have parents, but we don't have um, four. We don't have enough. four or representatives of we have one parent. We don't have enough. We have three. Or four of the issues. Yes. Okay. Four parents. You are. Oh, okay. Not of the meals. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that gives us an opportunity to review our proposed bylaws that you guys have had an opportunity to look through. Um, so, in order to make this a very structured activity, what I'd like to do is, as you go through them, so let's read the, the Article 1 all silently, and then if we have proposed changes or additions. So we give you guys 30 seconds 
to read that section and then we'll come back so eyes will be up to know that we're back. everyone had a chance to review article one mm -hmm. okay are there any is there any discussion around this area some areas that might be uh, that we might need to allocation of funds as required by the LCFF towards these and documented in the local control accountability plan. And, and as, as documented, documented or as and other things documented? Or the same thing, but that was just me. Good. <laughs> I put that in there so that we could see if you guys were editing. <laughs> <laughs> she passed me. Good job. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for saving her. Okay, and the, the line doesn't connect under article one. <laughs> well, see, there is an as here, so there's an assumption that the other as would come in after that and, right? <laughs> so it actually is probably correct. <laughs> it's okay. We'll put another as in. It's okay. Um, um, so the as is in parentheses, so it does. That so. Ensures. <laughs> it's a bait of the educators. Let's look at Article 2, take 30 seconds to read that, and then um, we can comment and have discussion on that. So basically, in terms of the responsibilities, they're listed here, and so we already have procedures that are by the state, right, that are requirements. So it's basically just following those procedures, but maybe to make sure everybody understands that. And right. So the template is generated by um, the CDE, or the California mm -hmm. Department of Education, as Ms. Serena right. just pointed out. So it's really us just kind of almost filling in our name <laughs> And, and looking at what pertains to us. There are some districts that are much larger than us that have um, provisions about having, um, if there's more than like 32 mm -hmm. ELACs in the district, there's some other provisions that apply. So um, those are things that we wouldn't include because we're a much smaller district. But thank but you for pointing sure that out. just make sure that we, we're watching so parents know that we are following the state guidelines basically when they have input. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. Are there any, um, is there any other discussion on Article 2? I found some typos, mm -hmm. and so did Dr. Cross. I would be consistent if you're going to advise on or advise upon. I agree. Okay, so for Article 1, um, mm -hmm. changing that to advise upon instead of on. Um, in that first sentence, that as was um, superfluous. Yeah, on. On, sorry. Yeah. And put as outlined.
plan. Mm -hmm. Singular. Singular. Okay. Do we need to say the California Education Plan? At the beginning, the first line? Mm -hmm. That line didn't go. No, it's California. I think that's fine. Okay. Um, and I saw in number seven, Con App is not an acronym. It's um, it's what is that called? Yeah. Abbreviation. <laughs> so it's so capital C, little O, little N, mm -hmm. right? And capital A, little P, little P. Period. No one ever writes it like that. They just always put it as one word. It's the consolidated application, and it's lovingly and commonly referred to as the Con App. Are we ready to look at Article 3? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question about number two? Yes. Um, the the district-wide needs assessment on a school-by-school -school basis, so would the schools be administering the, the needs assessment yeah, the, they, with a district template? Yeah. Okay. So I, I have that mm -hmm. for you guys that we do it in May at the end of right. the year. So. I would give that to the DLAC representatives here, or DLAC representatives, and they bring that back to ELAC. Are there any um, comments or questions or discussion regarding Article 3? The one thing that is flexible is the um, term of two years, we could make them one year terms, but um, I think in order, so that we're not scrambling at the beginning of each year, it's really important that we do two, at least two year terms, um, because that's been a struggle for, for the majority of us in getting our ELACs established. So having DLAC representatives that are a minimum of two years, I, I thought that was important. Does it need to specify um, because if you have a student who's RFAT, they're no longer participating in the language learner program, but RFAT parents can. You know, does that need to be adjusted or participating or have who have participated in? That's a great, that's a um, great point. So yeah, if we want to keep consistent with what the state is doing and allow that flexibility, so do we want to make sure, uh, we want to make sure our membership aligns with that. So um, shall current, be parents, current guardians, or former. Uh, current or former. So I mean, they would former. Even, you know, come out and if they, for whatever reason, or want to overthrow the president, can say, well, your child is our fact, and it says you can't be there anymore, so get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We kind of went over Article 4 and 5 already. Um, mm -hmm. So did anyone see anything glaring or... Um, Which part is that? Um, so the, the verb tense agreement. <laughs> so besides over assist, yeah, so instead of saying presides and then Insurance. assist, they should all be the same tense. So presides, assist. Educators. Yeah, they all are, the, mm -hmm. except for those, except for numbers two and three, sure. no, two and four on president and chairperson. Right. Article 7, we went over within the presentation, unless there's um, <coughs> any changes to that. Well, because they're meeting DLAC meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so DLAC meetings, under meeting conduct, um, DLAC meetings. We don't need meetings, DLAC. And then Article 8 has to do with um, 
changing this uh, this by these bylaws. So um, it's generally um, a two thirds majority. If we change it at a different time during the year. Um, <clears throat> But if we want to ratify it at the beginning of the year, so this is kind of confusing um, because each year we'll revisit these, mm -hmm. and it doesn't require that super majority. It only requires the fifty plus one. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to have anything in here about changing throughout the year, or do we want to just leave it as that we review them each year? And it's usually so, done yeah, that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell them to be loud. But <laughs> you fixed it for you. I'll let her know. I think there's a spacing error too. Yeah, on one one of those. I saw that too. Okay. Um, so we'll remove that supermajority and just say amendments to this document will be made. at the first mm -hmm. annual meeting. All those in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Beautiful. Okay. 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 This next item in the action items is going to be a ton of fun. Um, guarantee it. I don't know if I guarantee it. But, um, so we're going to count off into three groups. Our annual parent survey is broken down into three sections. Yay, I did it. I'm on track. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Um, so our annual survey is broken down based on the priority areas, or those three umbrellas, the conditions of learning, the student, um, the student outcomes, and the, um, the engagement. So what we're going to do is we're going to number off into three groups. And we're going to look specifically at those that pertain to that session. You guys have all of them, but you, you'll only be working with your group to um, make some suggested revisions, any additions of questions, and come up with some ways, or thoughtful ways, that we can increase participation in the annual survey, especially for parents and guardians of English learners, right? When you break into your groups, now remember this is last year, so the dates are not correct for, for this year. When you guys break into your groups, your first order of business is to pick or specify a facilitator, someone who's gonna do the note keeping, someone who's going to report out, and someone who's going to be the process observer. And the process observer is like the parliamentarian. They tell you when you're getting off track or not if you're into noise. Okay? So for priority, priority area one, I broke this document at where those survey questions end. So it's one through 12 would be the questions that relate to priority area one. And I'm going to 
going to write that on my little note. I mean, on my, oh, it keeps coming up. Questions? 13 to 22. Okay, good call. Oh, is it 13 through 22 is the priority? Oh, look, we came back. Okay, um, priority two is questions 13 through 22. And they're front to back. And then, as well as, I'm sorry, 40 and 41 also go along with that. So, that next page goes along with it. Priority three is 23 through 41. So um, Dr. Kotz just pointed out to me that we probably will not have um, enough members to have all three, role, all four roles represented. As long as we have um, a facilitator and a note keeper, and then um, I think we should have enough to do at least three of them, right? Yeah. Okay, and a reporter, so we, we might not have the parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to number you off. When I look at you, you'll say the number as I show you. I should make these three because I already did this. But okay, I already, I already went from one to twenty-three. So one second. Oh, you went from one to twenty-two. Okay, that's fine. Okay. 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 So, we've strategically placed you around the room so that you can not bump arms. So, priority area one, if you want to take those 12 questions with you, we're going to be giving you a timer of 10 minutes. Is that right? Um, so, priority area one is going to be convening here. Priority area two is over in this area behind Ms. Blanca. And priority three is behind Ms. Hennessy. Um, priority area one, I must warn you that it's not steady to write on, so you may have to use like the paper to the side <laughs> that you can set on the table. Okay, take 15 seconds to find your area. Okay. Ask a question. Yeah. Um, do we, will we clarify questions? Yeah, well, w when we look at this, um, what are we doing? We're just doing suggestions of, is it clear that... So on your poster paper, right. we're going to write down any suggested revisions or additions. Okay. And any ideas that you can think of to increase input, particularly for parents or guardians of English learners. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Number one's right here. Right here. Okay. So, here we are. Okay. Number one. Okay. Right here. Of someone who wasn't here and then we'll just make another one. Okay. Well, those are the rules, but um, I don't, I'll do it. I don't know. Whatever makes you feel better.
I'd like when you said about more like academic because again, so I think the goal here is in terms of the things you're supposed to do. You don't think it's I don't think that it's I think that's called something else. Of course. But I think what it is is what you mentioned in the classroom for ways to increase input from our parents. I'm not sure, as you said, are they going to know? Yes, 
Okay, you guys have about three minutes. Okay, just put the all the numbers up. We think we could maybe get ideas for this. Okay, that number 2017. So we're saying is two weeks. Yeah. Mark only one box. So I don't know for sure. Yes. Is it the hardware service? Okay, so yeah. that question you would need to Well, that's it. It's asking oh, okay. the teacher. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Ask the teacher if they know the teacher. And if they feel that the way they enforce the rules is fair or they insist it. Right. I know the teacher is just our favorite, but it's like high achieving work. They just have that. And then, so they know the teacher. 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 I also commented on the school. I don't think we need to put it at this is time. Not, uh, maybe a guideline, guideline but uh, I have a follow-up so question. Well, and and also also if, if, well what do you mean? Like if they yeah. say no, I think it's going to be clear that if, I think it's clear though. If they say no, that they need to be short on the side. So I guess that's their struggling. If you can hear my voice, clock one. If you hear my voice clap three times, put your hands on your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a computer line. Two minutes. Okay. 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 I just don't do, um, do enough. Barbara, hold on a second. Yeah. If you guys can, at this time, since there's very few minutes left, if you guys can come up with three, at minimum three yeah. ways to increase parent input, um, particularly with parents of English learners. One suggestion, for example, might be have printed copies available in the office and the parent liaison available to assist them, or having a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. And I know that this, these are some things that have been done. Mm -hmm. I know one thing that we're planning on doing at the district level is doing some focus groups at, at schools that um, did not have high participation last year. Can we just write them down, or like I'm on your poster. Write them down, okay. Post I'm thinking translation. I thought some of that was, I'm sorry, was implied, like changing the questions to make them more readable by the ELs, which would then result in more input. Okay, so just write like question revisions. Into diverse languages. You turn it in.
I'm not, you're not getting me shoving food in my face. Oh, no. So like, that'll edit out there. No, we can digitally add it. But the problem, there is a leak case where they don't, I don't know what bread. I'm all by Saturday, you know, just to eat some day. I don't know which one it is. Okay, so we'll go around um, and the reporter will share out their their ways to the to their ways to well you were the note taker, not the reporter. Yeah, so if the reporter would report out their suggestions for increasing participation, we'll start with priority one. Um, having in multiple languages, especially being online, we could easily translate. Um, competition for completion, so we're talking about if students, if their parents um, participated in completing it, they would get like a pizza party or free recess or whatever would be most incentivizing. Um, and then also a raffle for parents to participate. So if they complete it, then they are being gets in for a drawing, and we might have a grand prize at the district level. Is that good for you? Yeah, that's good. That's it. Good job, very much. Okay, priority level two. What were some ideas that you came up with? Uh, we, we approached it different. I like it. I'm coming over there. Um, but it's just that thinking about the language and the way it's written is to revise the questions so that they're more uh, user-friendly user for the particular languages. For example, we'll just use 21 as the example. I review my child's homework. Okay, but how about I know how to help my child with their homework? Um, and then also, um, because we're all hearing the same thing, we know that some schools have really high Spanish-speaking populations, but we have a really high, you know, Vietnamese and um, Mandarin or Cantonese. And so maybe perhaps something the district could think about is reaching out and creating a cohort of parents who could go to different schools when the need arose. Just like we were saying today yeah. about, you know, the availability of, of yes, that, right. Yeah. I mean, I just think, I mean, I, there are, there are sort uh, I mean, not to take it to the IEP level because of yeah. laws, but, okay. but definitely for helping with these areas. I mean, my parent liaison doesn't speak Vietnamese, and that's a huge need. Would you add on there, Macy, would you write um, cadre of parents? Or co did you call them a cadre or a cohort? Cohort, but I mean, something, I mean, like, as, like and also maybe to have a parent center, I don't know if a district office or at different schools where, I mean, I, that's a big thing in a lot of schools and yeah, other big districts, mm -hmm. right? So that they, their parents feel comfortable coming, having a cup of coffee, talking to people who speak the same language as they do. And those are fairly, it's just, you know, having a little bit of space for them. Okay. Um, from Priority 3, what's your reporter? Me, she's you were the facilitator, the reporter, I know. and the reporter. Yes. Well, I was trying to have her be the reporter, but she said she was more comfortable if I did it. Equity so of voice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so so I'll, I'll, should I just do it? Yeah, just your no, areas just for. Not, okay. So basically, this was the overall here was that um, to have it translated into diverse languages of. Mm -hmm a number of students at the school. For example, we have a number of Arabic students, mm -hmm. so okay. it's important when we have a number of students like that, not just Spanish. Spanish right. is important too, but everyone gotcha. wants to feel included and they all want input. Okay, and then this is for number 32. Number 32, school loop, and it's, it's saying to, to do things with school loop. Number 32, and I think number 33 also needed to be changed to illuminate. Okay, so those are just changes and, then, right? And then homework, well, what, number 38 um, is about after school programs, and um, I do a homework club with my students, and if they're getting a D or an F in that class, so it's not quite the way it's written there, but um, gotcha. so is it might be other, supervising that number 38. <laughs> is there any other suggestions you guys have for increasing input? I just had a question because I, we were talking here and I missed part of hers. Excuse me, but did you say having like um, prizes when they bring it back in or the like competition, competition for the kids, but also for the adults that they get a chance to win yeah. something as well? 
feel like the class right. with the highest percentage <laughs> return gets, you know, a pizza party or an ice cream party or, you know, whatever. Or non food. Exactly. Or non food. Really. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Or some kind of a yeah. setup where they but lose the something. Right. In yeah. yeah. middle school, they want food. Yeah. They want food. Of they course, you could only do that if you made sure that all languages were represented in the mm -hmm. survey, so that there wasn't yes. there was access. And that's that's the cool thing with some of the website mm -hmm. applications oh, is that we can we can do that. But also checking because I know I've been using Google Translate because I I it's don't not I, right I can do now. Spanish, but I don't speak Portuguese, <coughs> I don't speak Arabic, I don't speak Mandarin. So I've been using Google Translate to do things nice at home and. Checking with parents, I know the Portuguese part of Google Translate not so good. <laughs> At least not with my grammar and the way I write. So fantastic. Okay, so we're so going to translate, and then these are um, just revised. Okay, like so we're going to issue. Yeah. Okay, Excuse so me. we're going to go ahead and include all this feedback into the minutes. Um, uh, at this time. Did, we um, did Colleen mention about having it? Uh, and I think you mentioned it already about having the uh, set time aside at the schools and have the phone books available mm -hmm. and then have those, uh, yeah, have the I survey think that's, and have them. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. It's, 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 it's not written down. down. I, I, I oh, write it down. Yeah. <laughs> it's not them. written down, but it, is a, it should be. I, yes. I, this is something that the parent liaisons mm -hmm. could do. Yes. Right, I know in done. my um, in my previous experience, my parent liaison, we didn't have Chromebooks, we had labs. We had two labs on our 950 student campus. Mm -hmm. And um, so after school, during parent conferences, our, um, our community liaison, that's what we call them, right. she right. opened one of the labs and she was there and right. facilitated them mm -hmm. um, filling out that. You can have them fill it out at an ELAC meeting. Mm -hmm. Excellent, mm -hmm. at an ELAC meeting. Or okay. Principals with coffee. Principals Parents. with coffee. Yeah. And then uh, conferences are also going to be Yeah. This so maybe next year we get this out earlier so that we can hit them up at parent conferences. Well, so there's the winter performances coming up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah. Not school. all parents want to stay for each performance. That if you have them just, oh, if you want to stop by the office, you can. Right. Just have the combo card. If you want to leave early, do the survey and we'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's your exit ticket. I know one, one thing that our parents really wanted to work for was a raffle towards our PTA would sell sweatshirts. They were like zippy hoodies and they were like $30. And so PTA would donate a number of those. So when we would have competitions, our parents would enter the raffle because that was a big deal because those were really cool. And they were like, Three colors and everything. So and just uh, uh, tap into the resources of your PTA as well. Those yes, <laughs> so I don't know so if this question should be in the English one. English version was the, no, I no. guess it was 31. 31. Interpreting services are provided when they need them. No, oh, no, so that I'm wondering, sense. is there a way to take this out for the English one so we, when we do get the results, we have a better. Um, just, just better feedback. On Does it say? Is there one that says not? Well, it says not. App is not. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, you're right. Okay, okay sorry. So yeah. it's okay. Okay. So, okay. so as a closure, I'm sure. Are there, there um, questions that need to go to the parking yeah, lot that right, we didn't? Yeah. That you guys didn't get a chance to put up? Nope. Nope. Okay. So let me give you guys your closure activity. Darn it! I'm not going to get in my little presentation. Should I save it for next time? Oh, we need to, yeah, do you want an announcement or a presentation? No, I was just going to like say that I have some of the things we use, that's all. Should I do it in one minute? One or minute less? or less. Okay, should I do it now or wait till yes. do that for now? Okay. Let's do the announcements. Here I go. If you have questions that you haven't posted, go ahead and post them while Barbara shares some of the amazing resources. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say time. that I was happy to get some materials from the high school um, and uh, connect with high school people through also our counseling department. So I just love these wonderful things. And I already have been using this when I was at um, San Mateo Adult School as a sub. We were using this kind of program, but the high school uses the same thing. And so it has all these wonderful um, sentence frames and um, graphics for every type of thing you're doing. If you're doing compare and contrast, you have the Venn diagram. 
if you're whatever you know, the different types of things you're writing for, the kids can automatically go to a graphic. But also they have even more sophisticated ones at the high school as well. So with programs like this. So I'm gearing what I'm doing with them always every day they're hearing, we want you to be strong in high school. So, and that's when then you can go in and be strong in college and have a bright future. So I just wanted you to know that I feel so good because they have the next step to this book, but I'm telling students if you master it now, you, you can keep this one and you won't need that. So basically, that's it. I have also What is that like, last thing that you just showed us? This, this is the English, English 3D This is, is yeah, that? and they're using the same thing, level C. What is it? Exactly. Oh, it's discuss, describe, and debate. So you're doing a balanced literacy program. So they have listening, reading, writing, and what did I leave out? Speaking. Okay. So and so the students have these wonderful sentence frames. The difference, and I tell them the difference of what they're going to find in the high school program. So I said, master how to use these, and you have it's all these little sentence frames. Mm -hmm. Then you will have academic language and the difference in terms of your after scoring those points. For having, instead of saying that something was cool, you say it was interesting. It's so academic. You know, if you just lift the words a little bit. And so I tell them if this has meaning for you every day. Mm -hmm. So, But it's our program. It's what she's trying to say. It's our program in our, in, in our ELD right. classes. And then I have things because they need to do MLA, whoops, formatting. So I find other resources like Purdue OWL oh, that's so that they make slide. sure they're excellent. already doing what they're going to be required to do in mm -hmm. high school. Uh, so One of the best. Exactly. And I also get other little cute things like punctuation pockets, Cornell notes, all these wonderful charts that have, you know, punctuation at a glance. So they can, you know, it sort of demystifies it for them and gives them a way to organize. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, do we have questions or comments that were not posted? Does anyone have things to post? No? Okay, so then we'll need to make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Dr. Kotz makes a motion. Mrs. Dito makes a second or seconds that motion. Is there any discussion related to adjournment? All right, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All right, uh, meeting adjourned at 6.59. Whoa. Whoa.